had a glass of water today. Yeah. And how many of you wonder where that water came from? It's true. Most of us use water every day from cleaning, drinking, and bathing. It's such an important part of our life, and yet we never give it any thought. Where it comes from, how it comes to us, and even fewer of us worry if it will even last for tomorrow. The only thing we do know is that we need it to live. But how many of you actually know how long you can last without water? Yes, sis? Three days. Good! Wow! <laughs> I'm a water resources engineer. Some of you might have read that from the bio. So naturally, when I was invited to give this talk, I decided I'll speak on water. And since I wanted the topic to be somewhat original, I did some research. And I found that any and every person on earth had already spoken about water, from Matt Damon to Penelope Cruz. And there was nothing that could be said that I could say now. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will not be speaking about why water is important, why we need to conserve it, or, wait for it, the doomsday scenario of if we run out of water. Um, others have already done that. Instead, I want to talk about what connects us. So now you're probably wondering, I'm crazy. What's water got to do with it? Right? Well, in fact, quite a lot. You see, no matter who we are, where we're from, or what nationality or religion we belong to, we all are connected by a few things. We all share the earth, we share the air, and we all share water. Of course, water connects us in very obvious ways. It connects the highlands with the lowlands, the coast with the mainland, and administrative boundaries, it doesn't know what they are. Water can literally break down the mountain ranges that separate continents. But what I find very interesting is that water connects us all because of our shared history. You see this bottle of water? Well, it didn't come like this. To get here, water traversed a long journey spanning millennia. And across the way, slowly and slowly, it connected mankind into one community that shared a common purpose, acquiring water. You see, some 10,000 years ago, our ancestors had to travel long distances, spend their entire day searching for water, which was their life's purpose. And so, when they saw this life-giving fluid, they ran to it. Water brought them to the banks of the rivers. Water brought them to the lakes and the basins. Water brought them to the oasis in the desert. You can say that water was perhaps the first thing that brought our ancestors together. Well, it gets more interesting. You see, once water did bring us together, it was also the impetus for us to innovate and invent together as we tried to solve common water problems. And what were these water problems? Well, problem number one. How do we ensure a consistent supply of water? You see, mankind was at the whims of nature. He faced floods, then droughts, then floods, then droughts. So to deal with this variance, he had to store water. So what did we do? We built basins, we built cisterns, and we built dams that could store water in times of excess, such as in floods, so that we could use it in times of scarcity, such as in droughts. Problem solved, right? Wrong. You see, once we solved the problem of storing water, we had another problem on our hand, and that was transporting water. As mankind spread over the world, he needed ways to get water to places where it was abundant to where it was scarce. So what did we do? We did what humans do best. We invented. In Rome, we built aqueducts. In Egypt, we built canals. In Persia, we did canals. In all these different places, 
different people had come up with different ways to achieve the same thing. To harness the power of water. And in doing so, these people, our ancestors, had unlocked the economic and political means for great civilizations to begin. You see, water and greatness, they go hand in hand. The great leaders of the past didn't need to be Harvard educated or great orators. They were men like the great Emperor Yu who built a flood control system for China to take in the mighty Yellow River. The great thinkers of the past were people like Elon Musk. They were men like Frontinus, the Roman senator who operated and maintained the aqueducts and wrote the treaties on water engineering. Even the great Leonardo da Vinci, you'll be surprised, was obsessed with something so commonplace as water. Some of you might be familiar with his work, The Vitruvian Man. That image shows Vitruvius, who was none other than a water resources engineer, who also designed the water wheel. Well, since we're talking about the water wheel, let me come to it since it's an interesting example that shows how water was not just a global challenge, it was an intergenerational one. As the name suggests, the water wheel is a wheel with buckets or blades attached at the outer rim that could harness the power of moving water. But that's not what's really interesting. What's interesting is that no one knows who built it and yet it was found all over the world in different places. Now, some Western scholars say that it was Vitruvius who built it first, but that's in fact false because it was already in use in Egypt, in India, in China, and in Greece just within a few decades of one another. It's interesting that such different people had come up with the same invention, perhaps. You see, no one knows how the invention really spread or who invented it in the first place. But what they do know is that it led us to devise the water mill that we still use today. So the water wheel is an in invention that shows how one idea, it had spread over different places, over different eras, and it connected mankind across space and time. So you see, for water to get into this bottle, it took great leaders and great thinkers to come together to invent and innovate and to solve an ever-evolving problem that the solutions could at best be provisional, which is why the water challenges still continue today. And that's why they connect people like me, water resources engineers, with you all and with practitioners, policy makers and academics as we try to use water to grow food, to produce energy, to use in industries, and to protect for the future. For you see, water connects us not just with the past, but also with our future. So the next time you're all drinking water, I can see some still drinking something, it all has water, that this is more than just a colorless liquid. This is the same water that your ancestors had to travel miles and miles for. This is the same water that the Greeks, Romans and Chinese built their great civilizations on. This is the same water that farmers every day use to grow their crops. This is the same water that in the summer we all played with in the Han River. And this is the same water that connects us all with 8 billion of this world's population. 